if I say WP link list, the first thing, the concept which should come to your mind is all about the node. If I use this WP link list, and how do I store this data in the memory? To find the first operation that I can perform is insertion at the beginning. Observe the nodes what we have. It's a singly linked list. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on linked list. So guys, in this session, I will be discussing how exactly I will be able to perform the operations on doubly linked list and also singly linked list. What is exactly operations is all about? Are you speaking? So yes, how do I insert the node and how do I delete the node in different positions is what I will explain to all of you. So guys, without wasting much of your time, let me get into the session. So the first one that I have here is all about the doubly linked list. So what exactly doubly linked list is all about? So guys, if I say doubly linked list, the first thing, the concept which should come to your mind is all about the node. So what is the speciality of this node? So guys, this node has got three different parts. The first part I will be using to store the reference of the previous node. And the second part I will be using to store the data, whatever I want. And the next and the last part is what I will be using to store the reference of the next node. So this is the speciality that I have with respect to the lovely linked list. I have spoken about this in detail in my previous sessions. In this session, I will discuss how exactly I can insert the node and I can delete the node. So before I go to that, I will also show you the memory representation of doubly linked list. So guys, this is how I store my data, what I have in the doubly linked list in the memory. So guys, let's understand what exactly that we can do it and what is that we need to understand. So this is the table that we have. So this is the data part, okay? And this is the previous address. So previous in the sense what? So this is what I will call it as a previous address part, okay? Whatever the node that I have, so that previous node address I will be storing in this part. So that is what I will be storing in this column. And next column, what is the name? column name? Next. So here in this part, I will be storing the address of the next node. So using this table, how can we form the doubly linked list? Let us see. And then after that, we will come back to this and let us analyze that. Okay, so fine. The first uh, row, what is that I have? In the data part, I have 13. You all know that if this is the node, okay? If this is the node, this node in the doubly linked list will have three parts. The middle one is what I will call it as a data part. So what should be the data? So I will have 13. So what should be the address that I should store in the previous part? So I should store it minus one, okay? So fine, you all know that next in the sense this one, what should be the value? So four. So four in the sense the address of the next node. So minus one in the sense the address of the previous node. That is what you need to observe here. So fine. So I understood how exactly I will be able to represent the content what I have. So first I will have this node. So this node data, I will be representing it in the memory like this. This is what you need to understand. Let me show all these things. Again, what is the next node that I have? Node number four. So observe here. So this is the node. So node in the sense you will have three parts. So guys, what is that I have in the data? 15. So I should write it here. And what is that I have? One in the previous. So one in the sense this is the node. All right. So the address of this node. So after that, so what is the six? Six is the address of the next node. So that's what I have here. That's what you need to remember. So fine. So, all right. So you know this. Let me create one more node. So again, I have three different parts. So in the sixth node, I have 19 as a data. That's what you need to remember. And then four as a previous address. So this is the node number four. That's what you need to remember. So guys, what is that I have? So you have four. So I will just write four. And then eight is the next address node that you have. So this is what we have done. All right, so fine. The next one, again, I have one more node, node number eight. So observe here. All right, so I have created the node. All right, so in the node data, I will have 57, okay? So what is the uh, address that I have? Six in the previous node. What is the next one that I have? So minus one. So that's what you need to observe. This is the doubly linked list I have. If I use this doubly linked list and how do I store this data in the memory? 
So this is how I store the data. This is what you need to remember. If I have the linked list like this, so doubly linked list, especially I will be storing the data in the memory like this. This is what I will call it as a memory representation. So that's what you need to observe here to understand how exactly the memory representation is happening. So fine. What are the next thing that I have? Operations on the doubly linked list. So guys, let's understand one by one. It's very easy. So fine. The first operation that I can perform is insertion at the beginning. What is that? Insertion at the beginning. So fine. So let me take this place to explain that. Imagine I have the linked list like this. Okay. So I should insert at the beginning. Imagine this is my end of the end of the doubly linked list. I will store null. Okay. So fine. So what is the operation that I have to perform? Imagine head is pointing here. Okay. Head is pointing to this node. I have to insert the node here. So what should I do now? So I will first, I will create the node, okay, which has got three parts. So fine, the node is created. Then I should store the data into this node. So fine, I have uh, stored the data. Then I should store the previous address to this node. Then after that, so guys, I will store the address of the next node that is address of this node. Then I will point this head to this node. This is what I have to do when I'm inserting the node in the beginning. So what is that? So first you have to create the node, then you insert the data and you give the previous node. Okay, or, or you will point the head, then you will store the address here. In this part, you will store the address of this node. That is what you need to remember. And then after that, so here you will change the address. So guys, what you will give the address of this node, you will specify here. This is what you need to perform in the insertion at the beginning in the linked list. So fine, we understood how exactly we are doing. So what are the next operation that we have? Insertion at the end, it is very simple. Guys, how do I insert here? Again, what is that you will do? First, you will create the node which has got three parts. So fine, what is that you will do? You will insert the data. So fine, after that, you will make this as null. All right. So then after that, so guys, here you will specify the address of this node. That's what you need to specify. Specify the address of this node. Here you will specify the address of this node. This is how you will insert the node at the end. All right. So what is the next operation that we have? Insertion after a specified node. It's very simple again. So guys, imagine I need to insert it here. Okay. What is that you will do? So you all know, right? So first you will create the node so fine which has got three parts so fine i will insert my data imagine 10 is the data so now what is that you will do you will store the address of the next node that is this node so fine we have done that you will store the address of this previous node so here you will store the address of this node again here you will store the address of this node so that's it this is how you will insert in a specified location so before you decide, okay, where should I insert that location you need to traverse and you need to find. This is how we are doing, okay, with respect to this a program we will discuss in the lab, all right. So the basic concept you need to understand, only then you will understand the program. Moving forward to the next operation, deletion at the beginning. So that's what you need to remember. How do I delete in the beginning? Delete at the end, okay. So delete at the given position. So fine, let's try and understand that concept too. All right, how do I delete? Okay, let's uh, write a simple uh, link list again. So guys, imagine delete at the beginning. So head is pointing. All right, so head is pointing here. And I have uh, the node here. All right, so again, I have a node here. This is the end. All right, so I have null. So I need to delete this. What should I do now? So I should just point this head to this. I have removed, I have freed this. This is what you need to remember when I'm deleting the node in the front. Delete in the end. What should I do? Suppose imagine this is in the middle. So instead of making, okay, so keeping the address of this next node, what will I do is this part, I will make it as null. I'm deleting at the end. All right. So I want to delete this middle one. How do I do it? So guys, imagine I need to delete in the specified location. Imagine this is my location. Okay, I need to delete this. How do I do it? So guys, here I have the address of this node. Okay, so what will I do is I will store the address of this node. 
So now, so this connection is not there. Directly I'm giving this. So here I have the address of this node. Instead of this, I will give the address of this node. So I have deleted this node. This is how I will delete a particular specified node from the doubly linked list. So fine, traversing, you all know when it comes to the doubly linked list, I can traverse in both the direction. So that's what you need to observe here. I can traverse in both the direction, two and four. That's what you need to observe. And searching an element, so one by one, one by one, you can start searching sequentially in the doubly linked list. That's what you need to remember. This is the different operations that we perform in the doubly linked list. The next topic is all about circular linked list. So guys, in this circular singly linked list, what exactly happens is, observe the nodes what we have. It's a singly linked list, but the only difference that we have is, so the last node points to the first node. That is the only thing that you need to remember here. So guys, what happens here? So how do we represent this in the memory? It's very simple. Same thing, what we did in the doubly linked list, instead of three columns, we have two columns. So what is the first column? The first column represents the data part and the next column represents the next part. Next part, and this is address of the next node. So fine. So guys, you need to understand one thing. In the last node, we will have the address of the first node. So that is what we need to remember when it comes to the concept of memory representation of circular singly linked list. So fine, now we need to understand the different operations that we perform with respect to the circular singly linked list. So guys, what is that? What are the different operations? Insertion at the end. So guys, what happens? Insertion at the end and insertion at the beginning. So that is what we need to understand with respect to the circular singly linked list. How do we do that? So let's understand very clearly. So guys, consider this diagram. I need to perform the insertion in the beginning. Okay. How do I perform the insertion in the beginning? That is what let me explain now. So insertion in the beginning in the sense, in this place, I need to place one more node. So for that, what should I do? So first of all, I should create the node. So fine, I have created the node. So how many parts I will have in this node? Two parts because circular linked list. So that's what you need to remember. So fine, in this part, I will store my data, whatever you want, you can store it. So fine, I have done that. So in this part, I should store the address of this node. That is what you need to remember. So fine, I have done the address updation. So after that, the head should point to this node. So once I'm done with this, so guys, the last node should update the address of this node. The last node should update or it should point to this node. That's what you need to remember when I'm inserting in the beginning. So fine, so what exactly happens if I perform insertion at the end. So guys, same thing here, I will create one node first. Then after that, I will insert the data, imagine 10. Then after that, what I will be doing is here, this is pointing to the first node since it is a circular linkly list. So now what should I do since I'm inserting this node at the end? So I should point. So from here, I will start pointing to this part. Then after that, the address of this will be pointing to the first node. So here I will be placing the address of the first node. And here I'm changing it to so the address of this node. This is how the insertion in the end in the circular linked list. That's what you need to remember. So fine, we understood insertion in the beginning, insertion at the end. Now, guys, it is very important insertion in the specified node. That will not make any changes. Whatever we have done in the singly linked list, same thing happens here also. But now let us understand how exactly deletion will happen. Deletion in the beginning and deletion in the end. So let us understand that. So guys, if I want to delete this, what is the necessary things that I have to do? So fine, the head should point to this node. The head should point to this node and the address what I have here, I need to change it to this node. So that are the changes that I have to do if I want to delete this node. So fine, we understood now deletion at the beginning. So if I want to delete at the end, what does that I have to do? So guys, here, instead of storing the address of this node, I will store the address of the first node so that I will be deleting the end node. That's what you need to remember with respect to the deletion of the node in the circular linked list, especially the last node. So fine, this is how the different operations that I perform 
with respect to the circular link list. And also the traversing and searching will happen same thing even in the circular link list. That is what we have uh, mentioned it here. All right. So with this, I have come to an end of this concept. So the next topic is very, very important and very interesting. Don't miss the next session. So till then, take care. Bye bye. Happy learning.